Hello and uh, welcome again. This is uh, Brian from Roboticy and today I'm going to show you a quick little bit about how to set up one of these uh, Chinese made six channel transmitter receivers uh, using uh, Windows 8 so that we can use them to control uh, robots. And um, first thing I'm going to do is show you that I've already put the batteries in. It's ready to go. Um, you should have, with your transmitter, you should have, of course, this USB dongle and, of course, the receiver that came with it. Uh, the first thing we have to do is connect the um, USB dongle so that we can communicate with it and set it up. Because right now, if you try to play with it, uh, these things, I think, are shipped probably for helicopters or something. And uh, they don't do what I want to do if I want to do with play with robots. Uh, go ahead and get your uh, cable out and plug it into your USB port. And I've got that. And what you're going to need to do, uh, typically they say you should uh, download the driver before you plug it in. Uh, I plugged mine in because I wanted to see what the chipset was first. It seemed to work fine, so I'm going to tell you what I did. Um, so I plugged it in, and uh, let's see, I'll go to my control manager. Nice little shortcut, by the way, if you don't know it, it has the, uh, the Win key and X, and that'll get you to this menu here. You can click on Device Manager. And from Device Manager, you can see that uh, initially it came up as an error. It didn't have the driver. So I was able to find out that it's a Silicon Lab CP210 chip. So what I did is I like to find the latest and greatest. So I just put in the Silicon Lab CP210 uh, description in Google, clicked it, and of course it took me right to the Silicon Labs website. And from there, since I'm running Windows 8 or 8.1, uh, I clicked on the software download directly from here, downloaded it and installed it. And as soon as I did, lo and behold, the little arrow, uh, error disappeared and I now have this thing hooked up on COM4 and it works great. So hopefully you have the same luck, but I'd still recommend it ships. There's some software that uh, you can download that has the drivers, but I just wanted the, the newest, so I went straight to the manufacturer. Um, so next thing we need is the software for this, the the actual uh, transmitter. And similarly, what I did is I knew from research that it's called a t6config file. So I typed that into Google, and that gave me this top link here to mycoolhealy.com. And if you click on that, we've got a really nice tutorial and lots of information about how to uh, set these things up. Again, I think the guy or the people that do this are probably into helicopters. Um, I want to be able to set this up for robots. And so what I ended up doing was simply clicking on the actual software and I click on this. Okay. And oops, now I'm getting another copy down here. Download this. And then once you do, uh, open it up and install it. Uh, you'll have to decompress it. And then that'll install the software onto your computer. And you should end up with something like this showing up on your desktop. All right. So once you have this, uh, you are basically ready to get moving. Let me plug the uh, USB dongle into the back of the thing. Now, this is a brand new one. So it's going to have sort of the default settings on it. I'm going to drag this over here. And we'll open up this. Set these things kind of beside each other. Okay. And turn it on. And you'll see what I mean. I, I, I Again, I don't have a helicopter or anything else. Uh, this seems about right. Um, that seems about right, although I'd like it to go maybe further. Some of this stuff seems okay, but then I'm not even sure what in the world this is doing. If I flip this, it goes 
turns off my channel 3 or does something. I'm not sure. Maybe it... Oh, and this seems to be working on channel 6, which is fine. I, this one does something over here. It's a lot of little stuff. I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. It didn't seem quite as intuitive as what I wanted. What I want to be able to do is drive my robot around with this and have this one here is for alternate functions and be able to turn on and off autonomous control with the flip of a switch. So if it goes up, it's autonomous. If it's go down, it's, uh, it's running on remote control. And so that being said, first thing I did was make sure that I had a type that I wanted. And in fact, I do have this uh, ACRO type uh, system set up. The next thing I did is set up a mode. I wanted channel one and channel two on this stick. So I chose this, model two, channel one, channel two. The next thing that I did, let's see. Yeah, that one's okay. There we go, I had to actually click it. How about that? All right, ACRO, I've actually confirmed that I want that. Okay. Several of these things disappeared. I'm not exactly sure what to do. Again, I'm very ignorant to anything other than the robots. Um, so we have stuff going on here. This seems to be just right. This appears to be good, behaving the way I want. Uh, but these don't seem to do anything anymore. Oh, no, it seems to play with channel one. I don't want that. So now I'm going to go into this mix. Mix one. Uh, what I want Mix 1 to do is I want it to be controlling channel 5. I want the source to be channel 5. No, I don't. I want the source, I'm sorry, to be this VRRA. I want it to go to channel 5. I want 100% up and down rate with it. And I want to be able to turn it on and off with switch A. All right. Boom. So we see we now have this controlling channel 5. And if I set this here, I can turn it on and off. So I can just have an if then statement in my program. And I can turn on and off autonomous behavior. Let's do the same thing with the second mix, except we're going to have it go to this one, I'm sorry, this one, VRB, I want it to control channel 6. I'm going to give it 100% again. And I want to turn on and off with switch B. Okay. So on and off. And now I have another fully controlled system. The other thing is that I want to be able to um, get more response out of that. This is designed for servos that only turn 90 degrees. Uh, I want to uh, be able to go 180, so I'm going to have some bigger numbers coming out of here. And you can do that by changing your endpoint. I'm going to make it, oops, I'm going to make these. I think the maximum you can do is 120. And I'm going to set everything to 120. I just want, I can deal with it in code uh, with the robot. Okay, everything's set to 120. And look, I've got greater control here. I can probably, we can. Set those things in, get those nice and zeroed, like that. You can tweak this, like if you want it to be just right, and you say, oh man, look at that bummer. This is, my, my uh, setting is right on center, but this isn't, or sorry, this isn't, and that kind of annoys me. You can adjust that, that's channel two. Let's bump it up, say 30. Hey, look at that, that was actually a lucky guess. All right, so now I've got it right on center. This lines up, this lines up. Um, this, this one's one of the ones that stays, and this one is nice and perfect. Like I said, this one stays. 
And last, let's check these out again. And I've got good range there. And I can turn it on and off. So we'll set that all the way. And this one, we have good range here. And we can turn it on and off. OK, that should do it. That's everything I think you need to know to set it up. And now it's all set for doing uh, some robots. So I'll shoot the next video and show you how to hook it into a, uh, a Teensy uh, Arduino type controller. And I'll see you soon.